For more than a year, the people of Gaza have suffered through almost unimaginable death and destruction. Like nearly everyone in this UN refugee camp, Abdullah's family has been devastated by the horrors of this war. His life has been changed forever. I'm a young man from Gaza. I had big ambitions. I wanted to build my future. I worked as an electrician, helped with hairdressing and did moving jobs. I had great ambitions. I wanted to build and I started building my own apartment. I was planning to get engaged and married. I loved playing football and volleyball. There were many things I loved to do before the war. I have a small stall, but honestly it's more for passing time than actual work because it brings in very little income. No matter how much I work at the stall and try to provide for the people in the tent, there are a lot of things the tent needs. Food, water, vegetables and many other things. The days are long. Over and over, he watches videos of the aftermath of an airstrike next to his family's home in Gaza City. It was the first day of Israel's ground invasion last October. His father, his brother, and others were killed. That day, it's a day that can never be forgotten, really. I can't forget it because right after the strike, when I woke up, the first thing I saw was that I was lying on the ground. There were rocks around me, metal around me, and trees around me. There were martyrs lying here, my cousin there, my brother there, so many martyrs around me. I was injured in my leg, the one that got amputated, and it was a serious injury. I tried to walk but couldn't, so I started crawling towards the martyrs lying on the ground, trying to see who was there. There were so many martyrs, the injured and the destruction. It was massive. Abdullah was taken to Gaza's largest medical complex, Al Shifa Hospital. But after three operations, his leg could not be saved. About 20 days after the injury, my leg was amputated. Three days later, I found out about another shock that hit me, when I learned about the deaths of my father, my brother, my cousins, and so many members of my family. Each piece of news was harder than the one before, and it deeply affected me. Abdullah's recovery was cut short. Israeli forces had surrounded the hospital. The IDF raided El Shifa, claiming it was used by Hamas fighters. I had to leave Al Shifa hospital and evacuate because my family was already displaced in Sabra. We are originally from Al Sina area, but the rest of the family was staying in Sabra after being displaced. So I went with them to Sabra, but after a few days it became unsafe there as well, and we moved to Daraj. But even Daraj became unsafe. I was struggling with my treatment and changing on the wound caused by the amputation. You know, when someone undergoes an amputation, they need regular wound changes and a doctor, and things were really difficult. Even getting a cane was beyond belief, as they say. Abdullah's family joined a mass migration. Warned by the Israeli army to leave Gaza's north, up to one million people fled south but with the Rafah crossing to Egypt closed, Gazans were trapped. At that time, I had just been injured, and even with crutches, I didn't know how to walk with them yet because I had just come out of the hospital, which was under siege. I kept trying as hard as I could just to cross the barrier, to cross the checkpoint. I really suffered a lot when I came to the south. Honestly, at first, moving around was very difficult. 
My cousin would push me in a shopping cart, the kind you use at malls. I couldn't have a proper wheelchair that was for people with disabilities, which was really hard. The only thing I had was the shopping cart. I had to bring that cart all the way from Gaza to the south. Six months ago, his family settled in the Deir El Bala refugee camp run by the UN. At least 650,000 Gazans now live in camps like this. In all, the UN estimates nearly two million Gazans have been displaced from their homes. Gaza's Ministry of Health says more than 42,000 Palestinians have been killed since last October. Charities provide the basics when supplies can get through. The UN has warned the risk of starvation in Gaza remains high. Honestly, getting water and food is tough. Right now, we're in the south, living in a tent in a camp. The situation with water is uncertain. Sometimes you might get a supply, sometimes not. You might have to go to the desalination plant, carry bags on your back, in your hands or containers, whatever you can manage. Even when it comes to getting food, it's difficult. Many people rush in, and no matter how much they understand your situation, they still need to survive too. They feel for you, but they can't help, because they also have families to feed, people who need to live, just like you. So it's really a struggle, not easy at all. <laughs> there are seven mouths to feed here, and despite the terrible losses of the last year, this family survives. Even with an estimated two-thirds of buildings damaged or destroyed in the last year, for Abdullah, Gaza will remain his home. I would like to leave Gaza for one reason only, which is to receive treatment, to get a prosthetic leg and be able to return to my life like before. I want to be able to go back to work and provide for my mother and the rest of my family after losing my father. I want to move forward with my life. This camp is hard, but Abdullah finds a way to go on and stay connected to the outside world. <laughs> Everyone here has suffered, everyone's life has been shaped by the war. But Abdullah still thinks about the future and whether in Gaza, after the death of Yahya Sinwar, it includes Hamas. It's possible to live with Hamas or without Hamas or with any faction that might come after. The people just want any faction that can provide them with a decent life, food and water. We will adapt, and at the same time, if the new faction sets certain rules, don't do this, do that, then it's possible to go along with it. Honestly, I don't know if Hamas will be defeated or not, or which faction might come after it. That's something only God knows.